Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. In this video, I'll try to clarify some of the confusions related to complex power. Um, and primarily, one of my student has asked this question that why we need conjugate in a uh, complex power calculation and when do we use KVA or KVAR for the reactive power. So let's see. Uh, we have learned that the impedance triangle uh, is a triangle like this which represents the resistance and the reactance and the impedance like this. So this is called the impedance triangle. Exactly same way we use a power triangle to represent uh, the three types of power. This one is the real power P, the reactive power Q and this is the complex power or also apparent power. So the power triangle uh, is used for uh, studying power. Now if the load is inductive then we draw it like this. The reactive curve goes up and this is the shape but if it is uh, capacitive then it reverses so it goes down. So this is for the capacitive load. But since in the industry primarily uh, we have inductive loads and therefore uh, we will primarily study or use this diagram for inductive load. Okay, so first thing is the active power. What is active power? The power used or consumed by the load. That is the actually the resistive load uh, consumes power only. So this is the uh, active power or actual power used by the load and it is measured in units of watt. So whatever our energy meter reads, that actually is the uh, power consumed by the uh, resistive elements and so that is why its unit is watt or kilowatt etc. And there are several names uh, used uh, to confuse us. One is the real power, then it is called actual power, it is also called true power, it is also called wattful power and it is also called useful power. So keep these things in mind. Now if it was a DC circuit we know the power is V into I but for AC circuit we need to modify the formula. It will be VI cos theta V minus theta I. So this angle is theta V minus theta I and actually if you look in this diagram so this is the real axis the voltage phasor makes an angle theta v with this so this angle is theta v and the current phasor makes an angle uh, which is called theta i and in between the two we have theta v minus theta i that is theta v minus theta i is the angle between voltage and current so that is why we have written here theta v okay next we come to the reactive power now uh, to understand this, if you just assume that we have an inductive load, so what happens into the circuit? When the voltage is rising up to this point, it is charging the inductor. So the current is flowing from source to inductor. The moment it starts reducing from the peak, then the inductor will start charging the source or start giving the current back into the source. Similarly, when it comes here, again the inductor will start charging. So it will now flow like this. And the moment it is goes uh, or crosses the uh, third quadrant, then the current will start flowing back. So we call that the current bounces back and forth between the source and the load. Now if you have an energy meter or uh, uh, power meter that we connect, it will not be able to read any power because this is happening very fast and so uh, you will not get any uh, power reading and you will not get a bill actually for this. Uh, we will we'll study that in the next video. So this is uh, uh, this power will is called the reactive power and we represent it by uh, Q 
equal to vi sin theta v minus theta i. So this power is uh, we use sine. As you know that uh, for the perpendicular the formula is for sine and for the base the formula is uh, cos. So same technique here. So we are using vi sin theta uh, v minus theta i. Now the question is what should be its unit? Okay. Now let's compare it with the active power that we have calculated, this one, and its unit, we uh, said that its unit is what? Now, if you compare the two, we have Vi and Vi, then we have sine, and here we have cos. Now, cos of some theta is a, is a number. Similarly, sine of some theta is also a number. So, basically, their unit should be same. V into I, V into I, and some multiplied by some number. So technically this should also be called watt. But then how do we distinguish whether this is part of the active power or it is part of the reactive power? And I give an example of uh, two of my friends. They were both called Javed. But one uh, was short-heighted and therefore we used to call him Javed Shorty. So this is to distinguish between the two exactly same way to distinguish between the two instead of calling it what reactive or what uh, uh, something, we just call it VAR. So its unit is VAR or volt ampere reactive. Okay, and now now we come to the complex power. Complex power is the summation of the two. This plus this, uh, we whatever we get is the complex power. So we can uh, call it that the complex sum of real power plus reactive power is the complex power. So S is equal to P plus JQ. This plus JQ. And as we discussed, there are several uh, ways of writing this. All these uh, we can use to calculate the complex power. Now, uh, a term, uh, apparent power, uh, becomes very confusing sometimes. What is apparent power? So, apparent power is the magnitude of the complex power. So, if this is complex power S, then its magnitude is the complex power with the phase angle ignored. And to make it uh, easy for you to remember, I have used this, this picture. You see, this guy with uniform or with phase angle we can say is the complex power and when you delete the phase angle like this was the formula for complex power VRMS RMS if we ignore the angle or delete the angle or remove the uniform so whatever is left is apparent power so the apparent power is the ma only the magnitude not the angle so magnitude of complex power and so it will be written as VRMS, IRMS. And uh, so from here, the P and Q, and on the same triangle, uh, it, it is complex power and it is also apparent power, that is the magnitude. Now, some people have confusion about KVA, KVR, and KW. Uh, let's again take help of the diagram. You see, the real power, we learned that its unit is W. The reactive power, we have named its unit to be VAR. And so the apparent, uh, apparent power or the complex power is simply called VA, that is volt multiplied by current. And when the units uh, get bigger, uh, then we just uh, uh, write kilo with it. So this is kilowatt, this is kilo VAR and this is kilo VAA. So if you look from the generator side, actually this is the supply source, this is supplying, and it is being used by the resistive element, KW, and it is used by the reactive element, KVAR. So that is why the generators, transformers, etc., they are rated in KVA, because this is, uh, we can say that this is the supply end. Okay, same uh, here, uh, the power uh, for act, 
एक्टिव और पावर फॉर रिएक्टिव एंड दी वी ए और के वी ए इज फॉर द कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड अपरेंट पावर ओके लेट्स हैव एन एग्जांपल टू क्लैरिफाई द कंसेप्ट द वोल्टेज इज गिवन बाय दिस फॉर्मूला एंड द करंट इज गिवन बाय हेयर इफ यू प्लॉट इट इन द फेजर फॉर्म You see, this has uh, an angle minus ten, so we we draw it here uh, uh, on the negative side minus ten, and the current has an angle of fifty, so we draw it on the positive side. And now to find the uh, uh, complex power, we find first of all these are the two, and uh, we have uh, we can write it in, uh, or we can use any of these formulas to find the complex power. Let's say I want to use this formula. Then for this I have to find V R M S and I R M S. So from here I can first of all write it in phasor form. So V maximum or V phasor is the magnitude and the angle minus 10. And here also it is 1.5 and the angle. And for R M S we divide by under root 2. So this is the R M S value. And now to use this formula uh, I'll just um, Write this formula, and this one you see is we have taken conjugate. Here we have taken for plus 50, we have taken minus 50 the conjugate, and if you multiply these two, we'll get 45, and add these two angles, we'll get minus 60. So this is the complex power, and now apparent power. This guy, so remove the uniform or remove the angle. Angle. So whatever is left. Is the apparent power so magnitude is 45 VA. Now, what are the advantages of complex power? You can see, if we have, we know the complex power. All we need to do is use our calculator to convert it into from polar to rectangular. So we get this answer. So the first part is the real part. So this is our real power, our true power, and it is in watts. And the second term is our The reactive power. So this is in 38.97. This is uh, in VAR. So the instead of calculating the real power and then calculating the reactive power and then adding the two to get the complex power, if you go the other way round, it becomes so easy. First calculate the complex power. Use your calculator and you directly get the real power and uh, reactive power. Okay, now the student has also asked why we use I conjugate. Well, um, one thing can be written in several ways, and I, uh, you know, if, if in this case, if I want to use this formula, I can simply use the formula, the, the magnitudes, values, and the angle minus ten minus fifty. And this way, I can calculate the uh, um, complex value. And now, if I want to use the other one, there's no harm. I just give an example here. We used to uh, um, uh, solve the subtraction problem by this. That is, five minus three is equal to two. Now, the new teaching says, no, you should actually write it like this. That is, five plus minus three. Uh, is equal to two, and this you can easily get from the number line. So from zero, let's say this is the zero point. You go five to the right, and then you come back three to the left, and wherever you are, that is the answer. So the one question or one thing can be done in two, three, multiple ways. Same here. What we are doing is in the case of a I conjugate, we are just changing the angle of this one. And then we can directly use this formula. So we can directly use uh, this formula or this formula. This is in the phasor form. Since we have the an uh, answer in phasor form, so we can use directly uh, this formula. So we half B phasor, 60 angle ten, 60 angle ten, multiply by I phasor, 1.5, and now we adding here the plus. Angle minus 50, so plus angle minus 50, we get the same answer. So there is no harm 
uh, whichever technique you use. I hope this gives you an understanding as to how to solve this type of a uh, problem or clarify your confusions. If you still have any doubt, uh, please write to me your questions. Thank you. Don't forget to share with your friends and subscribe the channel. Thanks.